Namco Bandai, what were you thinking with the Game Boy Advance port of Tales of Fantasia? Anyways, welcome to my Tales of Fantasia review. Tales of Fantasia was an action RPG for Super Famicom released in 1995, PlayStation in 1998, Game Boy Advance in 2003, PSP in 2006, and then it got a second port on PSP in 2010, and then finally an iOS port in 2013. Back in 2013, there's a joke going around within the Tales community saying that everything seemed to need a Fantasia port. Personally, I think we need another port of Tales of Fantasia. It hasn't gotten a port in about 10 years, and I would love to be able to play it on modern hardware. Anyways, let's get on with the review. Tales of Fantasia takes place in the world of Vesalia, under the moons of Silveron and Tethaela. Sound familiar? It should, because Tales of Fantasia is a distant sequel to the ever-popular Tales of Symphonia. The story of Fantasia takes place 4,000 years after the events of Symphonia. Vesalia is a world with mana where machines are quite frowned upon. Anyways, so the game opens up with Kles, the main hero, waking up in his hometown of Totus and is instructed to go boar hunting with his buddy Chester. While he's out hunting, he hears warning bells and rushes back to town, only to find the town set aflame and destroyed. Kles finds out from his dying mother that the town was invaded in order to get Kles's pendant that he has worn since he was a child. That's the main hook of the game, and it really gets it going. Tales of Fantasia is full of cliches. You throw in a bit of family betrayal, summoning of ancient demon kings, time travel, among other tried and true cliches, and you have Tales of Fantasia. Keep in mind, when this game initially released in 1995, these were not cliches, but in 2023 these storylines have been done time and time again and are old at this point. That's not to say that Tales of Fantasia isn't an enjoyable game. It does, however, feel like it's been told before. Tales of Fantasia doesn't stand out very much when it comes to exploration and world maps. It's very 90s RPG with exploring towns and this doesn't change as the game got ported over and over again. It's the usual talking to NPCs and robbing the townspeople blind by stealing anything not nailed down. Why else would you want to be a JRPG hero? Dungeons play out generally the same and Tales of Fantasia uses a random encounter system. The random encounters are incredibly frequent in Tales of Fantasia right down to being frustrating at times. This can get even worse when you're either lost in a dungeon, which happens often, or you are trying to solve a puzzle and you get interrupted by a random encounter. You can reduce the random encounters by using an item called a holy bottle, though I didn't notice much of a difference, if one at all. As the game has gotten ported, they have toned down the random encounters, but they are still very frequent. As a staple, of the series. The skit system from later Tales games is present in any port from the PlayStation port and later, except for the Game Boy Advance version, but we don't talk about that. Most of your character development and interactions come from these skits. They can vary from silly interactions to telling where you need to go next to continue the plot, or the typical male characters asking each other what they like in a woman. They're usually entertaining to say the least. When Tales of Fantasia was released in 1995, it had a quite unique battle system. It was a side-scrolling action RPG, almost like a fighting game. In fact, later on in the game, you can get an accessory called a combo command, pull off texts using fighting game commands such as quarter circle forward attack or half circle back skill. I never used it myself because I couldn't remember all the inputs, but it's a neat addition. In the early versions of the game, on the Super Nintendo for example, you had two long range techs and two short range techs performed by holding either A or B at long or short range. As the game got ported, however, it uses a directional plus skill button system as shown in later Tales of Titles, along with an up to three hit combo performed by pressing attack repeatedly along with other directions. In later ports, combos become even more accessible by letting you attack three times and cancelling into a level one tech and then into a level two tech. Much more fun than just spamming the same move over and over again. Speaking of spamming moves over and over again, one thing that did bother me in Tales of Fantasia in regards to the battle system is that some texts just aren't created equal to others. For example, there's no reason for you to use Rising Phoenix as it doesn't do much damage and it doesn't really combo into anything else. 
Whereas you can use the Tiger Blade comboed into the Demonic Tiger Blade for 90% of the game, and these moves are gotten within the first few hours, making learning new moves kind of pointless. The art style has varied quite a bit from port to port. The Super Famicom version has almost a Saturday morning cartoon art style, and while I'm talking about the art style, why does Plus have to have a bull cut? I will never get over how ridiculous it looks. Anyways, the PS1 version goes more with a chibi look. This is personally my favorite art style. And then the PSP versions go with a more anatomically correct look akin to Tales of Eternia. They all look pretty good, except for Kles's bowl cut in the Super Famicom version. Shame on you, Namco. The game otherwise is very aesthetically pleasing. The game is bright, it's colorful, and nothing seems randomly out of place. It all flows together wonderfully. As for the music, 1995 was when Matoi Sakuraba shined. The regular battle theme, Take Up the Cross, is still my favorite battle theme in the entire series. Decisive, the music that plays during the various Deus battles, and Fighting of the Spirit are also some of my favorite battle themes in the series. The town and dungeon themes are very appropriate as well. I really loved old Sakuraba music. Tales of Fantasia is a pretty average length for a 90s RPG. Running from about 20 to 30 hours, possibly up to 40 hours if you want to do the side content in the bonus dungeon. The game is paced pretty well, no side quests taking you too far away from the story, though they do involve a lot of backtracking, which can be frustrating when you have to take a boat everywhere. It's quite unfortunate that you get your airship, for lack of a better term, so late in the game and after an event that cuts off the earlier side quest, especially when you're fighting those overly frequent random encounters. Overall, Tales of Fantasia is an enjoyable but familiar game if you are an RPG bet. Definitely worth a playthrough if you can handle super frequent random encounters and god awful bull cuts. I will never forgive Nanfo Bandai for this crime against humanity. Thank you for tuning in to my Tales of Fantasia review, and if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you know when my new videos go live. Have you played Tales of Fantasia before? If so, tell me what you thought about it. That's the meat and potatoes, folks, and I hope you have a wonderful day.